everybody. Normally, I'd be doing my next Batman video here, starting doing the first couple issues or so of Robin's first ongoing. Um, but I wanted to do something more vloggish here because I haven't talked about my autism for a while, stuff for a while. There's, there's some stuff I wanted to talk about for a bit but before I get too far into this. For those who are new to the channel, by the way, Alex, I record as Count Zero. My the handle on the, the side up there is Count Zero OR, or is Count Zero R, depending on whether you're on a, a, trying to read my name off on a donors or subscriber page on twitch.tv or what have you. Um, whatever works for you. I have autism. Normally for this channel, I do a fair amount of critis of review work and criticism and that sort of thing, where I look at works of a book of uh, art, books, movies, television shows, anime, video games, what have you, through my autistic lens. And occasionally I talk about, on occasion, either in writing on my blog or in person, about my experience with autism, and this is going to be one of those times. Um, as of this recording, I couldn't tell by the calendar back there, I'm still in April, this video is going to go up in, in May. Um, and I am facing towards the end of um, this month, getting laid off from my current position. I may have something lined up by the time this video goes live. I may not. Who knows? The world is strange. Um, and this has got me thinking. I haven't talked about my autism for a while, and I, while I do realize that outing myself with my autism on this in public in this regard certainly does put things out there for a potential employer to might not be down with an autistic person working for them. Um, I like to, I fear it's appropriate to talk a bit about what it's like being autistic in the workplace, in particular, bouncing around from workplace to workplace. Um, for me personally, it's important to mention that autism is a spectrum. Each person experiences autism in their own way. Um, if you've met a person with autism, you've met a person with autism. That's a general good rule of thumb to go. Um, and different intersectionalities with autism or personal other groups will their autism will articulate in different ways. Um, experiences of women with autism is completely different from the experiences of men. Um, people of color with autism will have experienced the world, have had experiences in different ways. With that in mind. So when it comes to while I'm looking for work, because that's just the thing that I have done a fair bit. Um, I, it's not I'm I personally enjoy staying in position. I know the stereotype of millennials. Millennial, arguably a geriatric one. Um, I came just out of sh of shot on whatever side out of shot. Uh, um, as much. Geriatric millennials are stereotyped as floating between jobs because that's the way you get promotions, that's the way you get pay rises, that sort of thing. I, as an autistic person, like a degree of stability. Look for, apply for. When I find a position that I feel comfortable in or semi comfortable with, I tend to try to stick around. I am less inclined to. Job surf um, to the same extent that perhaps some of my peers. Um, now, let's not say I don't, um, but I also am just, I'm aware when I go through this that when I'm bouncing around uh, or like when I go looking for a new job, I'm uh, aware that there are certain growing pains that I run into when I start a new job. That I'll have to. Continue. Um, big one in particular is like one of the things with autism is I'm unlike the male lead of uh, Comey can't communicate. I am not as good at reading people as a autistic. That is autistic being a nicer term for someone who doesn't have autism. So a term. Distinct from referring to somebody as neuro. Um, 
I am not as good as a autistic person would be at reading people. This is it makes things get complicated when it comes to starting a new job and dealing with coworkers because the question becomes, okay, how do I read my coworkers? How do I know what I can talk to my coworkers about? Um, what type of people am I working with? And dealing with the idea of some coworkers are, like, on the one hand, like outgoing and amiable, but also a bit much, a bit too enthusiastic. And so I have to keep in mind, for the sake of my own mental bandwidth, my battery, my social interaction battery, it, it's pollen season. Um, in terms of my social interaction battery, having to deal with the question of I get particularly into or I, I try to hit it off with this person, am I also going to be hitting off with the person who, while they're otherwise fine, are going to be a bit draining for me in terms of, hey, Alex, how you doing? Big party slot on the back, slap on the back. And I'm just, but I'm not ready for that yet day and similarly it's like um so it's, it's trying to manage interaction levels to um this also makes for a certain degree of irony of a lot of the positions would have stayed at longer Not all of them but a lot of them are a degree of customer service spent a fair amount of time um i have six plus years of my working life not all in one whack um, doing various degrees of technical support and customer service, mainly technical support. I tend to draw like sports positions, which involve troubleshooting and fixing things. Major is a night field. Um, as much as film criticism and media criticism is my passion, um, I get drawn to that because I have a mindset that from partially related to my autism that makes that level of analysis and troubleshooting, that sort of um, that makes make those the work appealing. The flip side of this for service and direct person interact, person to person interaction, maybe not face to face, maybe phone, that is involved in these positions and having to deal with that. So, because of that, when it comes to autism and workplace um i have to figure out i have to manage my reserves manage my battery charge and thus when it comes to okay who do i turn to a lot when i have to ask questions who do i want to chat with and hit it try to hit it off with at work i do want to uh, i don't i i know by experience that what gets you through doing keeping your job is like being the guy at work who's quiet and keeps to himself doesn't actually help you your job. It doesn't actually help you get promoted. It actually help you uh, advance or do well enough in your position to where you get you know pay rises when you get to where you get kept when layoffs come around and that sort of. So there's a certain degree of pragmatism. Um. Also, so I do want to have so like I do enjoy social interaction with people, and and so managing that normally is an important part of the job. And then on top of that, having it's this is where it comes to okay, finding the people to interact with who have something in common to talk about, and I can be a degree of confidence that when they when I am ready to engage, they all. They will also not only be willing to engage, but also they will be willing to recognize when I'm not ready to and not force the issue. And as opposed to somebody who's perhaps more socially gregarious and either not out of mal not out of malice, but just because be seeing socially gregarious is how they roll, um, they will assume that by being socially gregarious, they will draw the desire for social interaction out of it. Which 
but you say, what's the big deal? This is all part of finding a job in the first place. Problem being, of course, um, or I, I shouldn't say, of course. I'm, that's making an assumption. The problem with this, or as a person with autism, depending whether you prefer disability birth first or person first, Um, where that gets complicated for me is getting back to, oh, we're in a workplace, it is the workplace takes time to develop that report and possibly, and to, to feel all this out and possibly even longer than be then with somebody else. Um, cause I am have to kind of. Find the opportunities. To, let's say find opportunities, but I have to feel people out and kind of try to do the observations. To what are these people like and see their interactions with others? With all of this having the asterisk on it of like, what are the ways autism manifests? I'm not great at picking up people. Um, those of some people's social uh big example like i'm a bad poker player but there are reasons why i prefer po magic the gathering to poker um i one i wear my emotions on my sleeve i, I clearly show my emotions if i have a good hand i can't hide it um i am no good at masking that that, that information and similarly, I had, like, you couldn't tell me, like, you, could, what is, you could tell me what a person's tell is. You could, like, tell me, oh, this person does this when they have a crappy hand, or this person does this when they have a good hand, um, as far as an actual professional poker player, and you could sit me down with, um, I, with, with like, a season's worth of, um, poker games, uh, or like the late night TV poker games. And eventually, maybe I might pick it up. It would take, it would take me like a couple of seasons to go, oh, okay. And meanwhile, like the professional, other professional poker players, like, aha, I have seen this person, figure out this person's tell after watching a week of the show. I've got a pretty good handle on it, and I will, I'm ready to, after having watched the tapes, to go and Play against him in an actual game. Maybe not an actual weaker player, but you know, but for me it feels like that. Um some things I'm better at picking up than others. Um a childhood spent with multiple with numerous social gaffes, just stepping like stepping on fields of rakes. Um making people ticked off at me for for reasons that at the time I didn't understand. And um, accident, not necessarily saying offensive things, but like just annoying people, um, and not knowing that I was annoying them until it was too late. All of that has like definitely gotten me pretty hardwired into me. Expect a negative response, not just taught me what the general cues are, though it did do that. Uh, but I go into social interactions with a degree, with new people, with a degree of tension of, I don't know what their social cues, like, I don't know what social cues are. I'm assuming, uh, therefore, I will, ass I assume I will annoy them. And I am consequently on um, incredibly tense, expecting that to happen. And also, while also being cautious and reserved and withdrawn, explicitly in an attempt to prevent that from happening. And that comes up when it's coming into the workplace. That is all my reactions, all like all my social interactions, tense and withdrawn and cautious until eventually I kind of get the handle of people. Once I go, okay. I talked about this thing. 
I, I put this bit out there. I talked to them about it. Didn't tick them off. Well, that's okay. Like, maybe next to, to see if it happens the next time. Does it happen the next time? Does it happen the next couple times? Maybe that's safe. And maybe I can expand on it a bit later. But that's safe. And then also after you've like done the initial couple connections, like, oh, they reached out about this thing. That is a safe safe topic. It's like it's like if you combined dialogue um conversation systems from like say uh uh, Sierra Online adventure game, a graphical adventure game with Minesweeper. That's kind of the sort of vibe for what my initial social interaction experience is in a new workplace. Of course, before you get to that, there's then the job interview. And that where things get complicated, the more so. Because, like, um, well, both more complicated and less complicated. The there are things about the job interview conversation and process that is some of that is systematic and repetitive, and it's a thing you can prepare for, and it's a thing that gen, things that tend to happen multiple times, so you can make reasonable assumptions. For consequently, as a person with autism who likes patterns and uh, systemic processes and I appreciate it can go. Okay, job interview. I'm expected to wear a suit. I may not be expected to wear a tie, or at the very least, a colored shirt. Maybe more or less formal about the whole process with with the days of social distancing video interview. But I can have the general sense of, okay, I can come to I, these things I know I need to do, I need to have. And this information I will be expected to present in um, talk about my work history. I'm expected to couch my question, couch my answers to questions, information that is resume from my work history, that sort of thing. Like all that stuff, which I can reasonably, but um, reasonably. On the other side of this, though, because of how the process works, there's no, I have, personally, have no real way of knowing, honestly, what, they, what the other side of the job interview process thinks. I come out of it going, oh, I, I think it went well. Um, but the answer, but the response for my basis on that, reason for saying oh i think i went, went, went well can be summarized as they didn't cut like the interview was the length i expected it to be they didn't cut it short and the guy oh, i have no further oh you um like, um you came in and you answered all like asked all the questions i expected you to ask i had questions to ask them which felt reasonable and um well informed that sort of thing uh and they didn't have a negative response um then i can go away from it going ah that seemed to go okay hopefully the next interview will go well too story there on that's on that side of things that said though um Like again, I'm fully aware that coming out of that interview, like, like in reality, my sister might not say this to other people. When I come home, I have no way of knowing. Oh, no, I like, I will tell my family member, have you? Uh, oh, or when I'm going to do D and D game, I'll go. Oh, yeah, I, I think the interview went well. Like I'm, I am also like. There's a chunk of me that knows I'm saying this in the same way that when somebody asks, how are you? I respond, I'm fine. Or I'm all right. Is I 
don't actually know how the interview went. It went like I feel good about saying that it went. And honestly saying that it didn't go well would probably be a downer to other people, so I'm not gonna bother with that. And so that's so that is my I guess 20 minutes or so, plus minutes, on here's what it's like for an autistic person to deal with the anxieties of the job hunting and job interview process. Again, some of this is stuff that probably most people in cat deal with in general, and with some variations on it regarding how things are from my side of the thing. I'm certain that there are some people who are like, oh, there's some employers who will telegraph and say, oh, I'm not interested. Like, oh, I, I think I'm pretty good about communicating whether or not we're actually interested in them, in the person. Like, <clears throat> Maybe, maybe you are, but for an autistic person, maybe you're not. And I'm trying to put a positive spin on things to myself or what have you. Got that out there. Um, Tomorrow, we should be on our regular spec or our regular schedule. Not with Batman, but with Nintendo Power Rangers spec. But wanted to get, in the meantime, I wanted to kind of get this out there. Well, it's on my mind. Felt it was important that. If nothing else, it felt it felt good to me to put all this out there for people who maybe are less informed on what the experience is of what it's like to be a person with autism to have this piece of information. Or alternatively, for other people with autism who are less comfortable communicating this information, if this is close to what you experience, it might be a useful you to hand your relatives and stuff. Hey, here's why I'm not looking for a new job, even though I don't like my current workplace. This guy's experiences are close to what I'm going through. Watch this video, but it's 20 minutes long. Shut up, not shut up and watch it, but trust me, just, just watch the video. Let him explain. Anyway, catch you later. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and in future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Cosmic Viewbox also helps support the show and it's not a monthly obligation or anything.